All right, everybody, welcome back. Our second presentation today covers how to work with baseball reference data. I'm leading this discussion. We are very pleased to have back with us for another year, Jonah Gardner and Zoe Surma of Baseball Reference. Jonah and Zoe, thank you so much for being with us. Take it away. Uh, thanks so much for having us again, Scott. We're very excited to uh, be here uh, at the Sabre uh, Analytics Conference. And uh, this is one of the highlights of our year. We love doing this. So uh, thank you all for coming to this uh, discussion today. Uh, my name is Jonah. I'm the uh, product marketing manager uh, at uh, Sports Reference, the company that runs Baseball Reference, as well as Basketball Reference and all of the other uh, all the other references. Um, my colleague Zoe is joining us for the second half of this presentation. Uh, she works on our engineering team. And basically the way it'll work is I'll talk for 15 or 20 minutes about how to find stuff uh, that you can't usually find on baseball reference using stat head, which is our sort of uh, uh, upgraded uh, uh, premium um, uh, set of tools uh, that give you more of an opportunity to explore and uh, uh, dig around the baseball reference database in, in ways that are just not possible with what's uh, on the um, on the main site. And then once I'm done, I'll turn it over to Zoe and she's gonna talk a little bit about uh, what you can do with this data once you take it off of our website. Uh, so we'll also go into how to export data from baseball reference or stat head. And then Zoe will show you kind of what you can do once you've once you've taken it off of there. So with that, uh, I'm gonna share my screen and we will start the presentation. Um, so this is the baseball reference homepage as uh, you can probably surmise. Um, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with kind of the basics. So I'm not gonna really go over, you know, how to find game logs and split stats and, you know, the frivolities, all of that stuff. Uh, but certainly if you have any questions about that, we'd be happy to answer it. Um, but from this top bar, I'm going to go over to StatHead. Um, StatHead, as I mentioned, is kind of like your key to unlocking what is inside of the baseball reference database. Uh, so there are a lot of things on here, uh, a lot of queries that you can run using these tools in StatHead that normally uh, you would have to have like backend access to our database and you would have to know SQL or something like that. Um, Instead, we've just built all these tools that let you run these searches and get answers to more complicated questions in a matter of seconds. So I'm, I'll start by kind of showing you around maybe the, the most popular tool on here, which is the, the season and career finder. So this is where you can search through every single um, season line that we have in our database for player stats. And there's a team version of this too. So um, just to, I guess, just to kind of like explain what I mean, on Aaron Judge's page, uh, if you want to see how many home runs he hit, you would just go to his page and see the the, the standard batting table. But in StatHead, you can search not just his stats, but everybody's stats and find what made his season unique. So, for example, um, you know, obviously we know the 61 um, home runs, but if we want to see maybe something like who had uh, – 130 RBIs and an 1100 OPS. You know, those seem like pretty impressive numbers. They both led the AL last year. How many other people have had a season like that? I would go into the season finder and um, set up a search in here. So uh, uh, the first thing you look at is on the side here, there's these search criteria. And these are where you enter the different things that you're searching for, the different components of our question. So in this case, I'm going to go down to the statistical filters. And I'm going to put in RBIs 130 and I'm going to put in OPS of 1100. If I can, there it is OP, on base plus slugging 1100. So those are the statistical parameters. We can put in, as you saw, a wide range of stats. We have kind of the basic, you know, box score stats. We have stuff like OPS and OPS plus. We have all the war stats, both war and its components and uh, some other really cool kind of like WPA uh, advanced stats type stuff. But for now, we're looking at 130 RBIs, 1100 OPS. Um, if we wanted to get more specific, we could do stuff like in these bio biographical filters, we can sort by age, uh, whether they hit left or right handed, uh, you know, height and weight, obviously height with judge could have been a fun filter um, to do, uh, even down to like, the number of franchises they played for in a season. 
And then lastly, we have these filters for Hall of Famers and All Stars and rookies and active players and stuff like that. But for for this purposes, we're just looking for 130 R R RBIs and 1100 OPS. Uh, we don't need to mess with positions, but we could have done that. And then once we have that set up, we just want to go up to this top menu, and this is actually telling it the kind of question we're answering. So for this purposes, we just want a single season stat, but we could do combined seasons or full careers. Um, we could do players with most seasons matching the criteria, which maybe I'll, I'll do depending on the results here in a second. And then we've got these cool options on the bottom for like teams with a certain number of players who all meet the search criteria or seasons with players who meet the search criteria. So there's a wide range of questions and options you can do on here. But for now, I'm going to run this search uh, and we will see what Stathead tells us the results are in just a moment. Um, so here we go. Now we can see this is every person with uh, a season of at least 1,100 OPS and at least 130 RBIs. Um, and we can see there's 53 individual seasons. Um, I just left it by the default sort, which is home runs. But if you wanted to resort it, like if I wanted to see uh, just the most to least recent, I can click on the season button and it'll automatically resort the table by that stat. So I can see that Judge is the first player to do it in 13 years since Albert Pujols. Um, and in the AL, he's the first since uh, Jason Giambi in 2000. Um, if I would rather see like who did it in the fewest games, I can do that. Um, or uh, the most played appearances. I can just re resort by basically any of these, uh, these columns up here. Um, so as I mentioned, we were just doing this one, but if I wanted to see who had the most seasons like this, I would change it to find players with most seasons matching criteria. And now I'll run this search again and we'll see who did this the most times, uh, just to kind of like help visualize what I'm talking about. So here you can see Babe Ruth had 10 seasons that meet these criteria, 130 RBIs, 1100 OPS. Lou Gehrig did it seven times. Jimmy Fox did it four times. And you can kind of look through the rest of the list that way. I could have also done... Um, most players in a season matching criteria. So I could see what season had the most players who who did this and, you know, so on and so forth um, down the line. So uh, that is uh, how kind of broadly speaking, uh, a stat head uh, search tool works. We have the season finder for season level stats. We also have the game finder, which searches through uh, game level stats. So every player has a game log with uh, their stat line for every single game they've played. The game finder lets you search through those. So if you're looking for like who had the most 10 strikeout games or who hit a list of players who hit for the cycle or stuff like that, you can do it in there. And then once you have those lists, you can um, uh, sort it by other stats on there. So if you wanna see who had the most walks while also hitting a cycle, you could do that, uh, stuff like that. Um, we have a split finder. Uh, so this is for split stats. So if you want to see leaders in things like uh, two out hitting or leaders against a certain team or leaders against a certain type of pitcher, um, all of that is in there. Uh, if you're looking for streaks, you can go into the streak, spinder, streak finder. Uh, and then the span finder is uh, kind of cool. What this lets you do is look through any sort of statistical span. So... Um, if I wanted to see who hit the most home runs in any 30 game span, I would go down here to span length and I can change it to any number of games. And then I would click get results. And it would show me who hit the most home runs in any 30 game span. But if you'll note here, I can also narrow that span down to be like from the start of season or to the end of a season, start of career or end of career. And a, a really cool one is start of stint with franchise and end of stint with franchise. So if a player gets traded uh, and like goes off in their first uh, 20 or 30 games or however many games with a new team, you can go into the span finder and see how that compares to other players who were, who were dealt to a new team or signed with a new team and how that new stint, uh, how, the, how that went with their new stint uh, on the team. Um, a good example of that is when Justin Verlander was traded to the Astros a few years ago. Um, he posted some of the best strikeout and ERA numbers uh, by any player uh, who uh, with a new team after after being traded. Um, so this was that was kind of one of the things that inspired us to create that tool was seeing seeing that. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I'm doing all right on time. So I'm going to dive into the split finder a little bit. I just want to show the kinds of splits we have in here. Uh, these are all splits that you can see on any player page, and you can see that player stats. 
But if you want to see a leaderboard uh, with within those splits, this this tool is how you do it. So you can see there's home and away, you know, pre post All Star break. There's month, um, but then there's also kind of stuff like whether they swung or took the first pitch of the at bat. You can get the actual count numbers. You can get clutch and leverage information. Um, you can see how they fare against power or finesse pitchers or ground ball or fly ball pitchers and then opponent and game conditions and stuff like that. So like if I wanted to see who hit the most home runs against ground ball pitchers this year, I would go to the ground ball fly ball uh, split and then I would choose the split I want. I could do any of them or I could do uh, just one specific one. So in this case, I'm looking for the most home runs against ground ball pitchers. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm just looking at 2022. And then if I wanted to get more narrow, again, if I was looking for like OPS, I could set a minimum threshold for plate appearances, or I could do some other stuff with these statistical filters. I could also set age or year or team or any of that stuff, if that's something I'm interested in. But this is just going to be home runs against uh, ground grounding grounder pitchers. And uh, yeah, so there we go. We can see that Pete Alonso had 13 home runs in roughly 200 plate appearances against uh, what we consider ground ball pitchers. And if you're curious what that split means, um, it's basically we divide all of the, the pitchers into, into th uh, like thirds uh, based on who gives up the most to least ground balls. So the pitchers in the, in the top 33% of ground balls are the ground ball pitchers. The pitchers in the bottom 33% are the fly ball pitchers. And then the pitchers in the middle are the, the middle. So that's how we come up with that split. You can see that Judge only had seven of these despite 62 home runs, um, whereas Alonzo and Schwarber uh, uh, both had over 10. Um, so there's one other really powerful stat head tool that I want to make sure to mention because it's a little less popular, uh, but it is super effective, especially for the kind of in-depth research that y'all are going to be doing. And that's the event finder. Um, we call it the event finder, but what it really searches is plays. It searches every single play in our play-by-play -play database. And um, that database is quite extensive. So um, the uh, uh, thanks to the work of the researchers at Retrosheet, we have uh, complete play-by-play -play data for every play of every major league game back to 1973. So that's um, now 50 years of, uh, of every play in baseball before that it's mostly more or less 99 ish, 99.9 ish percent complete back to 1950. And then it's somewhat complete back to 1915. So, uh, you, you can still get a decent amount of plays all the way back to when 1915, all the way back to, you know, Babe Ruth era stuff. Um, and it's mostly complete back to 1950. Uh, so this is a huge, huge database of plays to search through. And for all of these plays, you can get sort of these different filters. So you can see, obviously, stuff like the players involved, the handedness of the pitcher and batter, the teams involved. Um, but then as we get kind of forward in time, uh, our data on this gets better. So like in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, they started keeping pitch counts. So we can get the number of pitches in the at bat and we can get the actual count of when the uh when the when the hit occurred or when when the play occurred uh we can also get stuff like the batting order position the inning the defensive position of the hitter uh stuff like that there's even like fly ball type and where in the park the the ball went um so there's a real wealth of information here that lets you answer questions on this specific sort of granular play level. So um, one big picture thing you can do is just get a list of like walk-offs. So up here on the top, we have these special play type filters and one of them is walk-offs. So if you just wanted to see the list of every single walk-off in uh, 2022, if that was the, the data set you wanted to start with to work through, you could do that on here. You could do every walk-off in Diamondbacks history, you know, or every walk-off since 1990 um you can also narrow this stuff down a little bit so like if instead of walk-offs i wanted to see home runs by hitters in the in the ninth spot in the batting order um i i don't know why but i'll just pull up a list of that i could i could get that and then i'll have a list of those plays and one thing you'll see here is that it, 
in addition to this list of plays, there's the stat summary for, for all the plays that match, which can come in handy depending on what kind of search you're doing. And then you can also, again, sort by these column headers. So if you want to see like the biggest WPA swing or the highest leverage uh, within this play set, you can do all of that on here. So that's the event finder. It lets you, again, search our play-by-play. -play. Um, and then once you have kind of a data set you want, if you want to take it off of the site and dig around uh, a little bit more on your own, it's very easy to do that. And you can do that with both any table on StatHead or any table on Baseball Reference. And the way you do that is with this little thing right underneath that purple results uh, uh, title that says export data. Um, and when you hover over that, you'll see it gives you some options on this drop down menu. Uh, so the first is modify, export, and share a table. And when you do that, you see these little arrows and X's come up. And that actually lets you alter the table. So if you want to remove rows that aren't relevant you or columns that aren't relevant, you can just click those X's and they're gone. If you want to remove everything past a certain point, like if everything below this row is not interesting to you, you can click the little home plate looking one and that will X off everything below that. Uh, so once you have the table set up, what do you want? You have a number of ways uh, to to share or export or take it where you want to go. So you can from this from this option, you can get it as an HTML format. You can get a URL. Uh, you can get it formatted for Reddit. So if you're uh, commenting on a, on a Reddit board, you can just copy and paste that code straight in there. No no editing required or anything like that. Um, but what you can also do is go down to Get as Excel Workbook. And if you click that, it'll download a uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, to your, um, it'll download an Excel spreadsheet to your computer with this table on it that you can then use for any sort of further research that you want to do. The other thing you can do is click get table as CSV, and that'll convert it to a CSV format that you can then copy and paste if for whatever reason, the, if the Excel doesn't work, if you're trying to get something else where you need a CSV you can do it that way. Um, so these sort of ways of sharing and getting these tables off of StatHead, um, and I know that was a lot, so if anyone has any questions about StatHead uh, or about what these tools can do, uh, drop them in the chat and we'll circle back to them. Uh, but I think that talking about how to get the stuff off of uh, StatHead and onto your computer is probably a good point for me to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Zoe, who's gonna go over sort of uh, uh, some stuff you can do, how to take this off the site and what you can do once you've done it. So Zoe, if you're if you're ready to go, I'm, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Awesome, uh, thanks so much, Jonah. Um, that was such a great way to uh, start the program off. Um, so yeah, my name is Zoe. Um, I'm on, on more of a uh, like, like development uh, side for sports reference. Um, so I've been doing a lot of work recently as far for like college basketball stuff. Um, but I still have my hands within different things. So I still know like slightly a bit about like baseball stat head. So that's what I'll talk about today. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, show you a pretty basic way to um, start uh, taking off like the data from a stat head search and then using that within a, a Python notebook. Um, and so I will start sharing my screen. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So yeah, starting off blank here. But basically, um, what we're gonna want to do is um. So when you're thinking of taking off data from stat, it helps if you have a sort of like question or something uh, beforehand to kind of um like guide your research. So so uh, since I'm not the uh, most baseball savvy person i'll just do a kind of a simpler um thing here and i'm just gonna look um essentially for um for the relationship between well, how, how like pitchers um get more strikeouts basically so this is one of the uh stat head saved searches but basically um same as jonah uh showed you this is just with the season finder and so i i have down here um the uh 2022, I just figured we, uh, we can restrict it to that uh, for now. But yeah, so so one thing you'll see here too is that um, our results go to 
um, to the 200th um, result. But the thing is, there are still more entries. Um, so I'm going to show you how to manually kind of like patch those together um, to get one like CSV file you can use within Python. So basically how we do that is, um, yeah, same as Jonah uh, showed you um, just now, um, kind of like modifying the table. So some of these columns all kind of take off when I'm, I'm working here, for instance, like the rank uh, column, just because like we all, like we're going to have that um, within our tables we're working with. So we, so we can X that out. And then um, same with season because it's 2022 for each uh, player, it doesn't really matter to have that in there. So we'll X that out. Okay, so this is kind of the info we want. Um, I mean, of course it's stat head, so it has so many different types of uh, stats, which is fun to look at. So, so basically from here, um, I normal well, you can do the CSV um, share from that first step, but I like to uh, click the comma, comma separated uh, section here within this page because this will kind of give a like copy paste uh, up all um, uh, like result set. So, so here um, we have like the start of our, <laughs> of our data there. Um, so I am going to um, within um, our, our, uh, our notebook, um, we're gonna uh, create a new CSV file and within that, we're going to be able um, to store our, our our pitching values that we can use within pandas and, and Python. So, so here, I'll first uh, paste this in. And so you can see there's a ton of stuff here. Um, we have little like like reminders here. You know, if you if you use this data, you know, please uh, cite us because we we love seeing. Um, the work you guys do. Um, but for our case, we're going to cut that out. Okay, so now we have the top. Um, and so for this first row, we're going to want to uh, still have these uh, headers for the columns because that will help us when we um, put that in, into Python so it, it can like automatically detect what the column names are going to be. Um, so then scroll down here. Sorry, it's going kind of fast. Um, but once we get down here, I think there was a few extra things to cut out. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So another um, sort of notice. So we'll we'll uh, cut that out there. Okay. Perfect. So so this is the first um, step. Like this is the first two hundred players. So if you want to just um, focus on like two hundred players, like you can kind of um, filter like what players would show up in that search uh, through stat, you know, um, how Jonah uh, showed us like the different um, filters there for anything from like the number of uh, strikeouts here to, I mean, like he said, like decisions, whatever. So, um, so basically we have this first step here. So I'm just gonna save this and I'm just gonna call it uh, like pitching 2022 dot csv and that name really doesn't matter but um okay so we have that there and um so since i want to have more results um, uh, um the way you do it is like like there's this little like reload page here to, to uh start over so you're gonna have to, to do that because we have to page over so at the very bottom here we got the 200, okay. So then we hit next page. Okay, so we can see now here is 200 to, um, yeah, 400. Okay, so we still have more results after 400. So we basically just do the same thing here. Um, excuse me. And so we have the modify export, um, take out the, the rank there, take out the season, um, look for the comma separated. And so, um, I will do another uh, copy and paste. It's a very nice shortcut, so you don't have to drag everywhere. But um, so I will go down here and 
let's enter that here and okay so this is like essentially the same thing we just had for the first um just the next 200 values so since i want to have one cohesive big table uh, i i'm just gonna delete basically like this like header uh, uh, row here up and then uh cut off the um uh notice at the bottom as as well so so within here um I'll, I'll cut this out so this is like the first uh 400. so basically like this is how you can keep building um these i'm gonna um stop at 400 now just for the sake for our our our, our run through here but um you can yeah use however many um <laughs> that you want to so we will save this okay i think this is saved yeah okay so basically um I, um for this like use case i'm just going to use it a, a jupiter notebook uh, I, I really like them because you can like um like like it formats your graphs really nicely when you when you use things like pandas like matplotlib um those are all like yeah, python modules um that can help you basically you know like visualize data um and try to you know find cool patterns and stuff so so basically the way we uh, import that data in is super simple um it, it's uh just three lines basically here so we'll we'll import pandas um as pd and so pandas is yeah just this kind of like way to keep tables uh essentially um you don't need to know any, uh, um fully what that is now but i'll just kind of show you how we might do it um so then here uh, there's a function within pandas called read to csv um and so with that you just feed in that name of our uh a file there so it's pitching oh if i can spell pitching correctly that would be helpful um cool okay so here um once we have this um if we run this here okay so nothing showed up because um to get this to show we just need to uh type df one more time and then okay it's all, all here which is super nice um and it, I, I like this is why i i like the notebook so much it's like yeah so much easier to look at uh, um the stuff you're working on so so once we have that in there um basically like the next uh stage for um for what you would probably want to do is to uh just clean the data and just make sure it's in the format like you want it to be um so so for instance here, um, oh, this is actually nice. Okay, because because for the past, I I know um some of the K per well the the uh, strikeout percentage stats. I think it is still here. Um, the strikeout percentage stuff was uh, showing with uh, within like percentages, so it was like you know 50 percent and so we obviously don't want that format we uh, we want to keep that at 0. 0.5 um so essentially like we would um just kind of clean up some of these uh data points so uh in, in order to do that for instance here i don't even do we have a k k percentage here let's see it would be useful if we did okay so we okay so never mind about that <laughs> but um essentially if yeah if you were to uh, to cut off like the percentage uh sign there you can kind of just use like this like very big pythonic um way of you know just kind of uh, chaining like these like data frames to, to make them smaller um and uh fit better with what you want so for instance if you wanted to take this off it, it would be um like that sub data frame and, and then uh the, the string function uh, to, to then do this uh, r strip which takes off like the last um character and so um that would be the percentage um that it takes off and, th and then you could then type that as a float instead of a percentage um and so that would be uh, as, a, as a float um and then you would divide that by 100 to get the percentage um within a, a, 
I, you know, it's a decimal format. So anyways, I guess like this isn't uh, uh, cooperating with me today, but that's okay. So, so essentially like what, um, like, like once we have the table, how we like it, um, then we can start playing with different packages, which will help us make graphs. Um, so I'm going to use uh, Seaborn here. It's kind of built uh, um, from like matplotlib. Um, it just kind of keeps like, for me, it just seems like the, like the graphs that it makes uh, just look a little bit nicer. So that is why I will uh, use that here. But um, I cannot type today, man. Okay, cool. So, so within our um, uh, data frame here, I'm just actually gonna refresh myself on, on what our data frame is. Okay. So within here, um, so Seaborn has this really nice uh, pair plot feature. So you can kind of um, split up the different uh, values um, like based on, on a certain uh, um, like characteristic essentially. So, um, so if we wanted to say, for instance, um, like the way this is kind of uh, written would be um, this like Seaborn uh, pair plot. And then within that, um, we can put our data frame. And then within there, um, we can essentially choose like which like Y variables we want. Um, so for this case, you know, like, like we'll probably want uh, strikeouts just because that's like the big one. So we can say, you know, strikeouts, we want to, um, oh, that needs to be in a, in an array. Apologies. There we go. Um, strikeouts, probably like walks, maybe. Um, yeah, again, uh, you can use like whatever um, stuff you want, but the Y var would be that. And so the X var. So let's see. Um, I'm going to check that out as, as a function of, um, the uh, yeah the um uh, um how uh, 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 old the player is here, so you can uh, search on age, um and and then I'll also um let's check on the on the um the number of games that that they play. That's also a good one. So here we go. So so then within that um so the hue function that kind of changes like the color for the plot. So you can see, so I'm gonna um, split that based off of, do we have a, a role, I think, field? That's what I had, had uh, used the last time I did this, but um, so that can help us see here. So we'll do plot KWS, um, S and 10. These are just some values here that I have uh, saved. They're not necessarily anything specific. But uh, one second. Okay, so that's a dictionary, not a. Okay. It's hard to type when you know uh, people are watching you. But okay, so I will run this. It would help if I, if I define Seaborn first. That is my bad. <laughs> Import Seaborn as SNS. There we go. Okay, so there's G. So now we can hit here. Oh, what? Oh, my word. Oh, it's VARs. See, you get to um, to watch as I, you know, try to uh, figure out how to do this sort of stuff. So, oh, my word. Okay, so there's no role. Darn. So I'm going to do league. Um, that's probably easier here. So the league... Uh, column right here. So we'll do that. And then we will run this again. Okay. And so now like that plot there, basically you can kind of um, just see these different uh, sorts of charts that it spits out. So, so we can see, you know, based on like the number for the age, um, for the pitcher, how many, uh, excuse me, strikeouts they have versus the number of, uh, uh, of walks they give and so on and it makes sense here that a player like that's a bit younger and would have more strikeouts but um within uh seaborn you can then do even uh more fun stuff like finding like 
oh, the like line of uh, 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 best fit, um, which is super nice to have. Um, so in order to do that, we'll just pick something simple here. So um, sns.om plot is g. Um, do y, uh, y is equal to strikeouts. Um, q is equal to league. And we are going to put the data as our data frame. And then, yeah, just show it how to display the scatter plot. So we'll do this. And then here we go. So let's try this. Let's run that. OK. OK, so so like through here, um, you can see essentially like this will kind of um, show you different lines here. Um, it's not like super useful um, for this case, but this is just kind of uh, showing you how to uh, like things you could do it like 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 when you when you know like way more about, about this like than I do, I'm sure you can come up with even better um, graphs and, and uh, stuff like that. So I will um, share my uh, sample Python notebook that's all um, filled out with you guys. Um, and so you can kind of um, check that out whenever like, you would want to uh, and, and like step through it yourself. So that that is my that is my chunk of the presentation. Uh, Jonah, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought what was cool is you could see like the wall where the starters ended and the relievers like like took over there. That was on on the games one. That was cool. Um, so we have some questions already in the uh, in the queue. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to drop it in the Q and A or uh, the chat. Um, if there's anything you want to know from Zoe or I about um, what it's like to work at Baseball Reference, or about um, you know uh, the stats we have, the stuff you can find on the site, or stuff like that. Um, so uh, we got a couple questions about uh, like how to how to download data from the website. So I we kind of went through that, but that share and modify feature that we were showing you that's that's the only like official way to do that we don't have an api that you can plug into or anything like that um so if you want want the data from the site just export it as a csv or as an expel spreadsheet and put it kind of into your own your own notebook or or uh you know whatever file you want to do it as um we got a question from abel about uh the kinds of data we have if it's just the professional level or whether we have uh, college data as well. And uh, I'm excited to say that we do have college data. It's a newish feature uh, that I think we've added in the last year or so. So I'll share my screen and show you how to get there. Um, I do just want to mention the caveat that this is just for um, baseball reference. So this uh, college data is not in stat head yet, um, but it could be, could be someday. But in order to um, get to the college data, there's a few different places to go. Uh, if you scroll down here, or a few different ways to get there. If you scroll down here to the footer, uh, you'll see, here we go. Uh, this section here, minor and foreign and, and college. Um, and these are all of the leagues that aren't considered uh, uh, major leagues. So we've got the AL, the NL, some of the historic leagues, and uh, obviously the, the major Negro leagues are presented on, on the site as together as one set. But then we have other coverage of, of other leagues. So we've got um, minor league coverage that goes back years and years and years and years, all the way to the very early years of minor league baseball. We also have leagues like, uh, like Japan and Korea. Um, we have the Cuban league. Uh, we have uh, Chinese baseball. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff like that, but just recently we've added college baseball. Um, and you can see that for most of these conferences, it goes back to 2011. Um, and, uh, we've also got kind of some of these other summer leagues and, and prospect leagues and stuff like that. Um, but in order to get there from here, you can either go to these player pages. You can click on players. If you're looking for a player, you can click on conference. If you're looking for a conference or team, so I'll click on sec. And it'll go to 2022. Um, and then once this is here, you can see we've got the standings. We've got the, the team batting and pitching stats. And then if I come over here to players, uh, oh, 
that was the wrong thing. Sorry. That takes us to the every player who's who's ever played in any of these leagues. But if I come over here, uh, we'll get to the batting and pitching leaders. And uh, this will show us all the hitters in the 2022 SEC or the pitchers. We'd rather do that. And you can see you can sort it by their stats. Um, and uh, we've got all the kind of all the kind of main, you know, uh, uh, box score stats for these players. Uh, same deal over with the pitchers. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so here you can see the, the pitching stats. And then if I go to the player page, uh, you can see that uh, we have their full college career here. And then eventually, if they do get drafted, it'll link back and forth between their their um, baseball reference page. And actually, um, maybe uh, I'll, I'll go back to here just to show you what it looks like for someone who who started in college and reached the majors like uh, um, new Cubs shortstop Dansby Swanson. Um, you can see his prospect history up here. And you can see at basically every level of baseball that he's played at uh, that we have stats for. So we have the college stats and then his minor league career. And then eventually he reaches the majors. Um, and so you can see all of that there. And then you can also go up here. And if you hover over uh, or yeah, it, uh, you can go up here. And if you click on Dansby, Dansby Swanson overview, this will take you back to his main baseball reference page with all of the major league stats that you expect so that is how the college portion of the database works um let's see we got another question from peter about uh whether the database updates mid-game zoe i was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the process of updating the database uh uh, uh and kind of how that works from the engineering side yeah um so basically um we um the database uh, um so every like night basically we uh, um we like rebuild the sites um and like repopulate like the database with uh, with like the last night's uh stats but that you know happens at you know like i don't know two or three in the morning like whenever like you wake up usually the stuff is there so so yeah sadly not during the game so, but yeah like like should be there by the next morning um yeah and uh uh it's a uh it's a pretty cool pretty cool process and uh it's fun to fun to see how it works um we had another question from gabrielle who wanted to know uh, how to find definitions or formulas for the statistics uh on our site and that's very easy to do um i'll share my screen again just to show you but basically if you, there's anything that you're curious about all you have to do is hover your mouse over the column header and a little explainer bubble will appear. So if you see there, I'm hovering over EV right now and showing that that's exit velocity, uh, hard hit rate, you know. So for with any of these, if you just hover over it, it'll give you uh, a, a definition and an explainer on how it's calculated. Uh, for war, obviously, like war is kind of our most comp complicated thing to calculate. So you can see that's a, a still kind of a decent size explanation. But if you want to see the full gory details on how that is made, if you scroll down to the bottom uh, here and go over to the uh, under this about baseball reference section, you can see there's a wins above replacement explainer. And this uh, has a bunch of different stuff about how we developed our war formula, how it's calculated, um and kind of all of that information so if you're if you're curious about war go there but for the most part if you're just on the website you're like huh i wonder what that stat is if you just hover over the uh the column header it'll it'll give you the answer to that um so that was that uh wade had a question for you zoe um do you typically work just in jupiter or are there other notebooks that you like to use um, so as far as like my kind of uh, like basic like Python use, um, uh, I really like Jupyter. Um, I'm 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 actually not familiar with um with like different kinds. Um, but as far as for like my work, um, stuff that's mainly in a um Perl, which is essentially a, a kind of like the version of like Python before Python happened. So a bit dated. Um. um uh, um, like uh, like nowhere near uh so many uh, bells and, and whistles that Python has, but 
yeah, Jupiter no notebooks are a uh, super nice place to start. Uh, cool. Um, yeah. And uh, Alec was asking about the World Baseball Classic. Um, we don't have stats for the current World Baseball Classic, but we do have uh, the rosters, um, which are linked to on the front page of the website. It's in a section called the bullpen, which is kind of like a Wikipedia thing that we do, uh, where it's kind of like uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we have a team of editors who are kind of on a volunteer basis editing that. So they have the schedule for the World Baseball Classic. And they also have the, um, uh, uh, yeah, the 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 rosters for every team. So that's a great question. Uh, we'd love to get full coverage on that. I'm sure that's something that we'll probably be working on getting in there by the next uh, by the next time uh, that comes around. Um, let's see. Marcus was asking about bunt statistics. So you can get uh, sacrifice bunts uh, in different parts of StatHead. You can get it in the event finder if you want to see a list or kind of the situational information on sacrifice bunts. Uh, you can also get it in the season finder. Um, and then if you're looking for like bunt for hit type stuff, uh, that's not in StatHead on a player basis at the moment, but you can see it on the player page if you go to their advanced stats page, which is linked to off of the main site from that that gray bar. Um, I, I can I can show you if that uh, if you're having trouble visualizing it, but um, we do have bunt stats all over both StatHead and the Baseball Reference website, so you should be able to find lots of good bunt resources there. Um, Zoe Lane wanted to know. Uh, where we could find a, a good resource specifically for commands to parse CSV data in Python or R or Jupyter or uh, stuff like that. That's a good question. Um, I think, let's see. Um, I think there's um, just whenever you can find um, different, uh, actually, I think I have a list here. Give me one second and I will have that. Um, I think I linked some within um, the uh, Google Drive link that I shared, but um, I think there's there should be a good amount of um, stuff of, uh, available if you if you just look for um, for you know like graph within like Matplotlib or um, Seaborn or or basically you know just kind of like how to visualize um, like pandas tables. That sort of thing. I th I think there's some nice uh, Python tutorials that uh, kind of like walk you through um, like like the visualization um stuff with uh, baseball. I think okay. I'm seeing here. I feel like I have definitely um, heard of this before, but um, it is this link here. I'll post it in the chat. Um, so that could be a good place to kind of start. So that um, I guess like yeah uh, uh, yeah teaches you kind of like the big things um uh, uh, to get the data from the sites and then uh to uh work with it so cool and then alexander was asking about the college uh coverage beyond d1 uh right now we don't have like like juco and and kind of like those colleges but in addition to the d1 colleges we do have uh, a huge summer baseball, summer college baseball section with all of the different sort of regional summer leagues uh, that happen uh, around the country and that attract a lot of the top prospects from uh, from from JUCO and, and uh, other other places. So um, I would just recommend that you go into that college section and kind of explore and see see what you can find there. Um, and uh, it's 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 really good, really interesting stuff. Um, so it looks like those were all the questions. Did anyone have anything else for Zoe or I before we take off? Um, all right, well, before I go, I just wanted to let you all know that if you like what you uh, have seen from StatHead and you're interested in uh, giving it a try yourself, um, we have uh, a couple good deals for you. Um, so we have a special code uh, for people who are attending this conference, Saber23, uh, and that'll get you $20 off of a single sport or an all sport uh, annual subscription. Um, however, for those of you who are current students, uh, you can get a 50% discount on StatHead, uh, which is a better deal than that. Um, 
uh, just by uh, uh, when you go and check out at, uh, at checkout, there's like a, a way to kind of indicate that you're a student and then it'll take you through this student kind of verification company. And then when you do that, you'll get it for 50% off. So normally the price is $80. So Sabre 23 would knock that down to 60. But if you're a current student, you, you can get it for $40 with the uh, student discount. You can also try it for a month, totally for free. Uh, and see if you like it before you commit to any anything. Uh, there's a, uh, just sign up for a monthly subscription instead of the annual one. Um, and with the monthly subscription, you get a free trial. So sign up for the monthly subscription, try it for a month. And then if you like it, you can use the code or the discount to convert to an annual one. And if you don't like it, you can cancel and there's no no commitment or, or anything like that. So, um, uh, it, and then the other thing I wanted to say is just, if you have any questions about, how do you stat head or um, uh, any sort of like research you're working on and you can't find what you're looking for and you need our help or, or just anything you want, reach out to us. Uh, our email is uh, support at stathead.com. Uh, and uh, just mention you were at the Sabre conference and saw the presentation and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So that's support at stathead.com. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, let me just take a quick look at the Q&A. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Cole, I hope that I answered it, that this discounts for the, the yearly subscription. So uh, both the student discount and the, and the discount code are for the annual one. Um, but you can start with a monthly one, try the free month, and then convert to an annual when you're ready. So hopefully that answers that. Um, and I guess with that, we'll take off. But thank you all so much for uh, coming to our presentation. Thanks again to Sabre for letting us do this and hosting us. We have a great time doing this every year and uh, we love the conference and we love Sabre. So yeah, thanks. Jonah and Zoe, thank you both so very much for being here again. It's always great to have you. Um, Jonah, I'm gonna ask you to see if you got that, you got that saved up there so everybody can see that and make sure that we're getting, getting that code written down. So we're gonna take another break folks. So we're going to take a break until the bottom of the hour. So that's until 1.30 here in Phoenix. And when we come back, we're going to have Shauna Shee from Major League Baseball. And she's going to be talking to us about um, um, baseball savant and stat cast data. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Stick around, go take a break. And like I said, we'll see you back here at 1.30 Mountain Time, about 23 minutes from now. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>